Hello YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another Red Ang Revival video production masterpiece. Today we're going to find out is the Triumph Speedmaster the best cruiser in the whole world. Gonna let you know my little hum humble opinion on the matter. Stick around and stay tuned if you want to find out if this sweet here little bike is the best cruiser in the whole wide world. Speedmaster in the wild here, retailing at £12,395. I call it a bit of like a middleweight cruiser I think we're going to go for here. It's not a big uh, Harley Heritage Sport Glide Soft, uh, not Sport Glide, I always mix those up, Harley Heritage Softail Classic. Um, it's not a big BMW R18. But then it's not a small engine, it's a 1200cc parallel twin um, with 77 horsepower and ooh, 106 newton meters of torque off the top of my head. I should know that, this is my bike. Yeah, is it the best cruiser in the world? Well, it's up for debate, isn't it? But personally, looks wise, I really think it is really up there with one of, if not the best looking cruisers in the world for sure i think it is on par this is just it's all personal opinion this don't take my word for it it's personal opinion hold back the um the negative comments this is just what i think but i'd love to know what you think i think it is on par with the bmw r18 i'd recently test rode that bike check it out if you want to see that link up somewhere both stunning classic old school style cruisers now i do love the harleys but the harleys are a slightly different style to what i to, to these bikes so to complement the beauty of this beautiful motorcycle the triumph speedmaster it's a 2019 model this one we're at a beautiful little uh, british british church here lovely spot to come for a motorbike review uh, this bike's mine. I've, it's got a few little trinkets on it. The regulars of the channel will know what I've done to this bike, but um, there's no harm in seeing it again. It's such a beautiful work of art. You've got the um, brown leather knee pads here stuck onto the fuel tank. Uh, you've got, again, Trip Machines, the company. Nice sort of leather wraps there. Really like those. Makes it comfortable. Looks retro. Real cool. Up here, I've got a brass... Oh, can you see that? Yeah. Brass um, from a company called Motone, oil reservoir cap. I've got the Vance and Hines slip-ons on here, which are very nice. They look very similar to the originals, which is important for me. I want to keep it that stainless, stainless steel original exhaust. So that's very nice, but they sound a fair bit fruitier, which is good. I've also had it decatted as well, so that is very nice. I've removed the rear seat, the pillion seat, just to give it a slightly more of that Bobber-esque stripped down look which is nice, what else have I done? Oh, I've got some handlebar risers. Raise those handlebars up a bit, just give it a slightly more rised profile at the front, slightly more comfortable riding position for cruising. I've also got some uh, dresser bars up front here with some highway pegs on that you can uh, rest your feet on when you're on those long miles to stay comfortable. Just before we go, this is my bike. So I'm coming from a little bit of a biased place. I've had it for pretty much exactly a year now, nearly. I'm gonna do a year's review on her soon. So um, subscribe and stay tuned for that, it'll be fun. But yeah, also I forgot, I'm wearing my uh, Triumph t-shirt, so I've gone full biased, full Triumph support. But um, now let's hit the road and uh, yeah, it may not be the best cruiser in the world, stay tuned. I think she is up there, definitely, in my opinion, and looks are subjective, but up there as possibly the best looking cruiser motorcycle in the world. Now this is a middleweight, so the dry weight specification from Triumph is 245 kilograms. So all in, ready to go with uh, all of the liquids in, etc. probably about 
265 around there. So yeah, it's sort of a middleweight cruiser. When you get up to the big Harleys, the big Harley cruisers, you know, you're 350 kilograms. That is a heavy, heavy bike, but you know, cruisers are heavy. There's nothing wrong with that. Another thing I like about this bike, along with that weight, is the dimensions. If you compare it to, you jump off of this Speedmaster onto a big Harley or the BMW R18 or any other big cruise bike, this is a fair bit smaller actually and it's very noticeable in the handling and the riding dynamics of the bike. So if you're a big dude, a big guy or a big girl even, you'd be better off on a bit one of the bigger Harleys. They're so much bigger. But if you're slightly smaller, sort of average height, I'm five foot nine. This thing just suits my dimensions perfectly. So that's another thing I really like about it, is the dimensions for my specific height, you know? Don't worry about it, if you're different, if you're seven foot tall, it's not gonna fit you. Another thing the old Speedy's got, she's got 16 inch wheel, front and rear, which is a nice combo. And as, as we know from Triumph, Triumph make fantastic handling motorcycles. And actually this is no, oh, I can't think of it, no exception, that's the word. It, it's a good handling bike, it's not a sports bike, but it is flickable compared to many other cruisers and uh, responsive in the handling. It, other cruisers are great and settled in the corners, but this is quicker, quicker handling because of those, those small wheels and the uh, light dimensions. Because we're coming up behind this tractor full of hay. It's got the um, the Britishness of this bike. Now I'm not being biased towards British. I, I, I love American bikes, all other Japanese bikes, but there's something about this one. As a cruiser in particular, it's got that very gentlemanly vibe to it. It's, it's just looking at it, it's like a gentleman's bike, isn't it? Unlike that scrambler. <laughs> but yeah, I really like that. It's like an old World War II. You feel like it's just such a comfortable position with these beach bars rising back, nice straight back mid to forward foot pegs just cruising nice high screen up front here it's just a lovely place to be whereas sometimes harley davison's you can feel slightly badass and aggressive which is not a bad thing but it's a different vibe and for just cruising i like that about speedy she's got plenty of power for cruising we're going 55 at the moment it'll easily go over 80 90 miles an hour so it's absolutely fine for long distance cruising i've added on uh, these little ugh, kick them out of my foot highway pegs here so you can rest your feet up here plenty of room to stretch your legs out and chill out so you can't complain about that however as we're talking the best cruiser in the world this is where things start to take a little turn for long long distances on the motorway it's undeniable that one of the bigger Harley Heritage or CVOs or Road Glide or the BMW R18, they are more comfortable for long distances on the motorway and for doing over, say, a sort of couple of hours. You can sit at 80, 75 in the UK miles an hour and you're just so comfortable. There's so much room on those things to sit around. That is an area where they are better than the Speedmaster. Long distance, long distance cruising. Okay, so I'm starting to go pretty honest now. The build quality of these Triumphs is excellent. It's really good, lovely chrome. The paintwork on Triumphs are just, just really nice, fantastic. I haven't had any problems with this motorbike over 10, well, nearly 15,000 miles now. But I'm not gonna say it's much better than the BMWs or the Harleys. Reliability, it may be better than Harley, but for like actual materials, quality of the materials and I get some stick for this but I don't think the Triumph is per se better than Harley on their on their big cruisers you get on a Harley and everything's solid heavy it, it, it's quality material so it's on par with them I love this place look at this an old castle the gates never been open before here we come Very cool. So another thing about the old Speedster that may have it down to work uh, compared to other cruisers is because of her size, obviously you wouldn't want to get your uh, your other half on the back of there without the seat on, wouldn't be the best. But even with the pillion seat on, it's really not nice. It's not comfortable for a pillion. I've had a couple on for a short, few short rides and yeah, 
the Pillion um, Comfort on the Speedmaster is definitely inferior to some of the, uh, the bigger cruisers out there. Another thing that the old trusty old Speedy here, another negative, that she may not be the best cruiser in the world. And think about the term cruiser, you're, you're cruising, taking it easy, but on cruisers they're meant for comfort so you can go long miles, is... I spend a lot of time in fuel stations, <laughs> I really do, which you know if you're cruising and you're trying to get long mileage in, it's uh, yeah, it could be a bit of a pain. So she's got a 12 litre fuel tank, so I get about uh, 130 miles out of her, which yeah, is not a lot. So if you're doing long miles, I would say the big Harleys, bigger cruisers, slightly bigger tank definitely makes more sense for cruising. She's only half full, but oh, it costs up to 20 pounds to fill her up now. Fuel crisis. So, the bit you've all been waiting for is the Triumph Speedmaster, the best cruiser in the world. Having just spent a million pounds on filling a 12 litre tank up, <laughs> pretty much. The conclusion, I'm gonna say she's not the best cruiser in the world. I'm afraid so, guys, for all you Speedmaster fans. You may not be shocked. I don't think she's the best cruiser in the whole world. However, she's my favourite cruiser in the world. And that's all that matters at the moment, is how you enjoy the bike personally to your own taste. And at the moment, this is my personal favourite cruiser in the world. It's not the best, but it's definitely my favourite. Go out there, find your bike for your style, and make it your favourite. It doesn't matter whether it's the best, it's what's best to you. Words of wisdom from Red Ang Revival. Enjoy the rest of your day. Shout out to uh, Mental Health Awareness. Stay happy, all support each other. Keep on riding. See you in the next one. Ciao bella.